Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever it is that you are viewing this devotional. My name is Kevin Gregory. I have the privilege of serving as the pastor here at Detroit Lakes United Methodist Church. And we have entered this week the end of our Advent journey. We are almost back to the beginning, as it were, back to that night, back to Mary and Joseph in the manger. Christmas is almost here. And we're coming to you this day, right where we recorded our first devotional in front of the Christmas tree here in the sanctuary at Detroit Lakes United Methodist, where in a few days we will all gather together on Christmas Eve to light candles, to sing Silent Night, and to once again welcome the Christ here into our hearts and into this world. And all throughout the season of Advent, these last four weeks, we've been journeying through a series that we've called Back to the Beginning. And we've been taking a look at the beginning of all of the Gospels to see what they might be telling us about this season, about Jesus, and about what we are called to here in this Advent. And as we have journeyed full circle back to the beginning, we come now to the beginning of the Gospel of Luke. So before Mary, Joseph, before Elizabeth and Zechariah, Luke has these four verses. Many people have already applied themselves to the task of compiling an account of the events that have been fulfilled among us. They used what the original eyewitnesses and servants of the word handed down to us. Now, after having investigated everything carefully from the beginning, I have also decided to write a carefully ordered account for you most honorable Theophilus, I want you to have confidence in the soundness of the instruction you have received. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And so just like the beginning of all the Gospels, Luke doesn't begin right in the way that we would expect. Luke doesn't start with the story. And in fact, what we read on Christmas Eve, that part of Luke that's very familiar to us, that comes from the second chapter of Luke. In Luke chapter 1, we get Zechariah, Elizabeth, their own pregnancy. We get Mary's Magnificat. But in Luke 1, 1, we get this preface. Luke, the writer of Luke, is writing this gospel to someone. It's the most honorable Theophilus. And in fact, Luke, the writer of Luke, is also the same writer of the book of Acts. And the book of Acts begins similarly with Luke, the writer, addressing Theophilus. And we don't really know who this Theophilus is. Could have been one of Luke's friends, a mentor, perhaps. But I think, maybe, that I might be a little bit broader than that. The name Theophilus is a Greek name, and it means friend of God or beloved of God. Theo, as in of God, Theo like theology, and Philus like philia, one of the words for love in Greek, which is like friend or brotherly love. Friend of God. And so that means, friends, the Gospel of Luke is written to us. That Luke's Gospel is written to all of the people that will come after. That Luke is writing in a time when people are beginning to hear the message of Jesus and Luke wants all of us, in the generations that come, to hear what it is that Jesus was up to, to hear once again this story, to hear once again this story that becomes our story. And so that, friends, is an act of love. I invite you to think about that as we once again prepare to tell the story anew. That people have been telling the story, the story of Jesus, the story of God trying to make God's presence known in the world for thousands and thousands of years to anyone who would listen, to you and to I. And they'll continue to tell this story long after you and I are gone to the generations that come after us. And I think about sometimes those people that'll come after me I think about particularly 
about what the people that come after me will say about this time period that we are in right now. This time period that is a lot like the time period that Jesus was born into. In Luke chapter 2, verse 1, it begins, in those days. And we are living in those days, friends. Maybe we always are. Times of crisis, times of war, times of political upheaval, times of polarization, times of fear, times of uncertainty, times of anxiety, and times when the story of love and the story of God's presence are needed the most. And so as we end our Advent journey, as we return to the beginning of the story, as we once again welcome Jesus, think about what it is that you might be leaving behind this year. Think about your place in this story, in God's story, the story that God's been telling since the beginning. Think about the ways in which love has entered into your story. And think about the ways in which you might be creating space for love to enter other people's stories. So that other people in those days, in these days, might know that Jesus Christ is being born. That other people in those days, in these days, might know that they too are a Theophilus, a friend of God, a beloved child of God, just like you and I and all of creation. And so we hope to see you back on Saturday night in person or via the live stream as this story doesn't conclude, but simply begins again. And so may it be so. Amen.